Okay, so this video is about population distribution and economic development at the national scale. So the three subtopics in this part of the syllabus are voluntary internal migration, core periphery patterns, and megacity growth. But megacity growth will actually have another like separate video because it kind of has its own part on the syllabus. So I'll briefly discuss it in this. Um, but yeah, okay, so... Voluntary internal migration is the movement of the population away from their home from one part of the country to another. It occurs when people are free to move where they choose, so moving because you can and you want to, basically. And then we have, and also staying within your own country. And then we have core periphery patterns, which are based on the core periphery model, which basically shows that a more developed part of a country or the world, which is the core, and then kind of the surrounding less developed part of the country or of the world which is known as the periphery so basically there are two case studies for both voluntary internal my oops voluntary internal migration and core periphery patterns because um these two kind of ideas can be applied to both so those two case studies are bangkok and cairo or kind of thailand and egypt um, so first we'll discuss Bangkok and how voluntary internal migration can be seen and how the core periphery model may be able to be applied to Thailand. So the overall um, trend in Thailand, if you search up a population distribution map, is that overall it's unevenly distributed and the concentration is in the central area near the eastern seaboard in Bangkok and the north tends to be more sparse. Um, however, there are Kind of anomalous areas such as Chiang Mai and Phuket which do have quite a dense population compared to the rest of kind of the surrounding areas so and we will discuss that later in relation to the core periphery model so let's discuss the specific let's discuss the let's discuss the specific areas so if you look at bangkok you realize that it's very densely populated it's kind of known as the core of thailand in terms of the core periphery model due to the chao Phraya river basin providing ports and fertile land the kind of eastern seaboard south of bangkok housing large foreign direct investment from japan china investing three billion us dollars in korea and this again employs um, a lot of the population thus leading to voluntary internal migration from kind of periphery areas so there's also the administrative industrial and retail center of thailand in bangkok so again a lot of people voluntarily migrate from other areas such as isan to bangkok and if you look north of thailand kind of northeast you see the korat plateau so this area is sparsely populated due to the rural dry and sandy conditions and it does have rice farms, though of course these provide a low income compared to the more tertiary sector jobs that you see in places like Bangkok. So it houses 10% of Thailand's GDP. It's known as the poorest region of the country. There's one physician per 14,661 people, so low standards of living. And yeah, and then if you look at Chiang Mai, it does have a fairly densely populated um area however it is mountainous it suffers soil aging there's a lack of fertile land for agriculture um but we'll discuss this later in terms of its development and kind of its possibilities of being another core in thailand in the core periphery model and if you look at the ooh, east oh wait okay wait, i actually meant to write western so if you look at the western border of myanmar it's difficult to build on quite densely populated Finally, areas like Phuket, large tourism industry, making it very economically valuable, leads to kind of a population distribution skewed towards this type of area. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the core periphery model because we see that a lot of um, voluntary internal migration takes place moving towards Bangkok because of employment, economic opportunities. But so... Here we see that the reasons why the core periphery model might be able to be applied to Thailand is because it has a large proportion of investment, infrastructure and employment. There's evidence of the backwash effect, which is people coming to Bangkok, gaining skills, ideas and bringing them back to peripheral areas. 
Against this, however, are the idea that rural areas are developing and there are multiple concentrated areas such as Chiang Mai, Phuket, which are arguably different cores in one country. Um, also, people do leave Bangkok due to the negative side of urbanization, congestion, pollution, these and rising costs of living, such as, um, you know, in the very metropolitan areas. Okay, so now we'll kind of look at Egypt and how the voluntary internal migration and core periphery can be applied to Egypt. So if you look at the population distribution of Egypt, um, if you kind of Google that, you'll see that there tends to be a linear distribution along the Nile River. And ni actually 95% of the population lives along the banks of the river. So if you look at the specific areas, you do notice that there are some outside areas of outside of Cairo that have um, fairly dense populations. However, they are nowhere near the amount of um, people that live in Cairo and kind of on the Nile Delta. So on the Red Sea coast and the Sinai Pen Peninsula in the east, you see there is quite a few people there because of the tourism sector, which brought 8.3 million visitors in 2017. Also, um, kind of south of Cairo, there's the Fayum Oasis, which is a fertile region in the desert fed by a tributary of the Nile River, which has a agricultural industry for rice, cotton and wheat. However, it does suffer from water shortages as it only relies on this one tributary. And of course, we have Cairo, kind of known as the core central city with government, social services and trade accounting for 22% of GDP. It also has a large tourism industry um, because of kind of the historical attractions of ancient Egypt, Giza and the Sphinx. And this has also been a very largely developed area because of the establishment of the Aswan Dam in the 1960s, which com contributed to industry growth because it provided energy and it provided water supply for agriculture and yeah. Okay, so then if you look at Alexandria, it does have um, a higher population, um, not as high as Cairo because of its tourism, ports, fishing villages and resorts. And then you see the Nile Delta, of course, um, at the top of Egypt, which houses 80% of the population. It's one of the most fertile areas in the world. The main crop is sugar. There's easy access to the Mediterranean for trade, which has been established since ancient times. And if you look at the entirety of kind of the desert areas, you realize that kind of on both sides of the Nile, on the western and the eastern desert, it's very sparsely populated due to kind of a lack of water supply, difficult to cultivate crops, um, these types of factors. Okay, so let's think about voluntary internal migration. So people do tend to migrate to Cairo because of these government, social services, trade, all kind of being concentrated there. Um, and then on the other hand, for the core periphery model, we can argue that Cairo is a significant core. However, against this is that there are quite a few kind of areas with um, high population densities, such as the Fayum Oasis, which we previously mentioned, and kind of the tourist areas, and also the areas near the dam, such as the Aswan Dam, has a lot of employment, thus attracts a lot of people, so this might go against the core periphery model. Okay, finally, we have megacity growth, which is only going to be briefly discussed here. So the definition of a megacity is a city with more than 10 million inhabitants, um, however, this can be quite difficult to distinguish, of course, because um, measurements of the area of what a megacity is can be kind of inaccurate and um, they can vary depending on whoever's measuring it. So here are a few consequences of megacity growth. However, another video will go into much more depth with this.